Hi class, I want to show you how to create a quiz, which is your assignment for this week. There's two different ways that you can get into quizzes. One is by just clicking on quizzes on the left hand sidebar and it will bring up any quizzes that you've made if you've already made some. If you haven't, um, then you won't see any here, but then you can click add quiz right here. The other way you can get to it, um, Oh, P.S. I sent, set my home page to be the modules. If you're not seeing this when you click home, you would just click modules and then you'll see um, any modules that you have created. So I'm going to go down to where I have my example module of what I would like you guys to do. And since this is something I want to put into this module, I would click the plus button and I'm adding a quiz and then I can just create a new quiz from here. I can put it in an assignment group um, and I can choose whether it's indented or not. So I'm going to add it. And you can see that it comes here. I can toggle and see how much I want it to be indented or not. This one is, this one is not. Um, and if I were to have made a quiz by, by clicking quizzes, and done it that way and hadn't assigned it to a module yet, I still could assign it to a module, I'd just do it in another step. So I would click the plus button quiz and then I would just choose a quiz that would already pop in here because I would have already made it. So you can do it either way. Um, then you go into your quiz and you'll see that it's currently unpublished and this gives you a little summary of the information about the quiz, that it's a graded quiz as opposed to an ungraded quiz or a graded survey or an ungraded survey. Um, I haven't assigned any point values to it. This is the group it's in. Not shuffling answers, I have no time limit, no multiple responses or no attempts. You always see uh, what you wrote and you always see um, the correct answer immediately and you can look at all questions at the same time. But I can edit any of that by clicking edit. So now um, there's two different menus here, the settings menu for the entire quiz and the questions for the individual questions. So right here I can go ahead and put in quiz instructions. I can um, type in some instructions. I can upload a picture um, and I can also record or upload media which I think is a cool way to uh, tell your students about this quiz. You're going to allow access. Um, earlier today when I was doing it, it was having a hard time. Looks like it's not anymore. Hello! Hi class, in this quiz you're going to blah, 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 stop. Okay. Hi class, in this quiz you're going to blah, blah. Wonderful. Okay, so then that would um, show up right there. And now I can change any of the settings of the quiz. So I can make it a practice quiz, which will grade it, but not have the grade count. I can have it be a graded quiz or um, a survey. Now in my mind, this is going to be um, a homework assignment. So I could either do a practice quiz or a graded quiz. And what I would probably do is alternate. Sometimes I have it be practice, sometimes I have it be graded, and the kids don't really know when it's going to be practice and when it's going to be graded so that they always try their best but they don't feel um, anxiety about oh it's always going to be graded. Um, I am going to shuffle answers just in case students happen to be doing their homework side by side they don't just see um, another person's answer. I'm not going to give them a time limit I don't don't want that for my kids. I am going to allow multiple attempts because I want to encourage mastery and I'm going to either select that I want to keep the highest score or the latest score. I'm going to think the latest score will be most informative to me um, because that'll tell me if they're getting it. If they're guessing something right and then they're not guessing it right the next time then uh, they still need some practice. I'm going to allow them to have three total attempts um, 
and I'm not going to make it more than that because I think that would promote burnout and frustration if someone's trying, trying, trying so much. Um, so I'm going to do three. We'll check that out. And if my students don't like it, we would talk about it at class meeting. Let's see. Let students see their quiz responses. Let's have them see it at the end. And let's have them see the correct answers at the end. Um, also, I only want them to be shown one question at a time um, just to kind of decrease cognitive load so they're only focusing on one thing at a time. However, if they want to go back, that's fine with me, they can go back, I'm not going to lock it. And right here, if I had multiple sections of a class, I could choose that from here. And the due date, let's say this is Thursday's homework for Friday, so I'm going to put it as Friday. And I don't really worry about av available from or until. Available from makes it so that you can't go on ahead and like work through more of the class. Um, and until would end it, but I always... Uh, have fifth graders that don't do their things on time and need to do it later. Um, what just happened? I think it might have gone back without saving any of my settings. Let's try and see. Hmm. Okay, let's quickly redo that. Sorry guys. Last attempt, last attempt. I'm not going to worry about a due date this time. Save. Oh, show one question at a time. Do that again. Joys of technology. Okay. So this is how to do the settings. Now let's go and edit it again. But this time we're not going to be editing the settings. We're going to edit the questions. And what I'm going to do um, for my purposes in giving this quiz is I'm going to create a question group, which is like a question bank. Um, and I'm going to have the computer randomly select five questions from this question bank and one point per question. And um, I'm going to call it two digit multiplication and create the group. Now I can add questions to the group. See if you hover over it long enough, it tells you what that thing is. So I'm gonna add a question. Um, and right here you can select the type of question as it is. There's a lot of different ones. I'm going to select a numerical answer one because that's what my students will be typing in. And I'm just going to choose a random problem and I'm going to solve it. 54 times 16 equals 864. Um, and this is an exact answer, so I'm only going to put this. And I'm so the other option besides exact answer is an answer in the range of something. So you put the correct answer here and then say the range is like plus or minus two on either side, something like that. But I'm not going to do that. If they get it correct, I'm going to say, great job, keep it up, or something like that. Um, if I wanted to put other answers that would be possible, I could, um, but there aren't. There's only one right answer, so I'm going to click um, some feedback that would happen if they typed in anything else. And try and be encouraging. Update question. Okay. Now I can continue to add more questions in this question bank. And when I'm done, I would click save. Um, and then let's do that. Click save right now. Then I want to preview my quiz and just make sure it looks like how I want it to look. And if there's anything I want to change, then I can. Um, my quiz question should be coming up with my little cute video comments right there, but I'm not seeing it. Um, 
anyway, this is what a student would see. They would get five random questions. If they got it wrong, they could try again and they would get another selection of five random questions, which may include some of the same ones and may not. Um, and so that helps uh, keep students honest. And um, I think this could be a really valuable tool.